welcome to control engineering playlist here in this session i'll be going to explain stability criteria for system so there are different types of stability criteria that i'll be discussing in this session so which will explains you what is the meaning of stability as per control engineering point of view so ultimately let us begin this session with first point so basic definition that we all know like see what is the basic criteria for stable system so if a system is said to be stable system provided it gives bounded input with respect to bounded output so if output is bounded output in that case we can say system is stable so i'll give you few example so it will be clear like what is the meaning of bounded output so if i say i have output that is somewhat like sign so as you can see here so if you see its output so it is having bounded output so here why it is bounded output the reason is it has upper limit and lower limit so because of it has upper limit and lower limit this is what bounded output so it means system associated with this that has to be stable system now let us have one more example so it will be more clear like see here i have ramp output so this output is ramp output so here if you see output is not bounded the reason is it is ramp output so output is not having any limit so lower limit is there but there is no upper limit so no upper limit means this system is not stable output is not bounded means unstable system now let us have third case like see one can observe here output is somewhat this so here output is getting decay like this so here output is bounded with this limit this is upper limit and this is lower limit so here output is bounded so we can say this is stable system so ultimately first criteria that we can understand based on input and output if output is bounded with respect to time then one can say system is stable now let us move on to next criteria to understand this better a system is asymptotically stable provided if in absence of input the output tends towards zero in respect of initial condition so if we have as if we have zero input then output should go towards zero so that will result into system that is asymptotically stable so let us have one example so it will be more clear like see i have input over here so this is what step input that i am giving right now so this is my input now if i have output that is what happening like this but after input is zero now you see my output 
that is decreasing and it is getting zero so from here one can see output is decaying and it is getting zero so if no input is there in absence of input output tends to zero like this so if that happens then we can say our system is asymptotically stable system so if absence of input is there output is going towards zero so that results system to be asymptotically stable system now let us move on to next point stability of system depends upon poles stability of system that depends upon poles now here if all the poles are located in left half of s plane then system is stable if all the poles that is located in left half of s plane then system is stable so before i explain that on s plane let us try to understand what this means it means we have a transfer function and that transfer function has numerator polynomial and denominator polynomial numerator polynomial explains you zeros so roots of numerator polynomial that explains zeros and roots of denominator polynomial that explains poles now when we have a transfer function of system and if all poles that is there on left half of s plane then system is stable so this is what left half of s plane if poles are over here like this then we can say this is what in left half of s plane it is there in left half so as it is there in left half we can say system is stable if poles are there in right half system will be unstable so for left half we should have poles and those poles should have positive sorry negative real part so poles that should have negative real part the reason is you can see this is what real part of s plane and this is imaginary part of s plane axis so if real part of s plane that is negative here it is origin so if poles have real part that is negative in that case it will be lying in left half plane and if it is lying in left half plane system is stable so this is the basic condition that should get followed for a stability now let us move on to next point so that will gives you proper idea like see as poles approaches zero stability decreases so as poles is moving towards zero stability decreases so i'll explain that by one example like see we have two systems let us say we have system a here and we have system b here now if i say i have pole over here at s is equals to minus 3 and over here i have pole at s is equals to minus 0.5 so both of the systems are stable here but stability of system a is greater why the reason is pole of system a is far with respect to origin compared to system b so here pole of system a is far with respect to system b at origin so we can say system a is having greater stability with respect to system b so that is how we can identify 
comparative stability of system so in this case system a is greater stable with respect to system b let us have one more point so it will gives you more clear understanding when poles are located on imaginary axis then system is marginally stable when poles are located on imaginary axis then system is marginally stable and those poles should not be repeated for stability like see if i say we have poles over here like this so that is what resulting into marginal stable system the reason is this is what imaginary axis and poles that is there on this axis so that is what resulting into marginally stable system but one more condition that one should understands like poles that should not repeated poles that should not repeated means there should not be two consecutive poles on imaginary axis like see this is how there should not be repeated poles on a same point so if on a same point poles are getting repeated then system will no longer stable so when we talk about marginally stable system then we should talk about poles lying on imaginary axis but remember that poles that should not repeated so this is the condition for marginal stable system now let us move on to last point so that is the poles which are close to origin that is called dominant pole so that is what resulting more interference in stability that's why it is called as dominant pole like see for example if i say i have poles over here here i have a pole at s is equals to minus 3 and here i have a pole at s is equals to minus 1 for one system now if you see this system this system is having pole at minus 1 and minus 3 minus 1 pole that is nearer to origin compared to minus 3 pole so this pole is dominant pole why the reason is this pole interferes more in stability of system that's why that pole is referred as dominant pole so this is how we can justify what is dominant pole and we can justify what is stability of system thank you so much for watching this video keep watching keep sharing with your friends and you can suggest me those videos which is required to complete control engineering definitely i will try to place those videos which is required here thank you so much for watching this and suggest me those things which is required to explain here thank you so much